الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد we'll begin with uh, the recitation of the Quran for Barakah inshallah I want to recite this Surah Al-Waqiyah because the session today is on risk and uh, Surah Al-Waqiyah is the Surah about which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you recite this Surah in the night before you go to bed then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala inshallah will protect you from starvation and from poverty and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for that inshallah <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا وقعت الواقعة ليس لوقعتها كاذبة خافضة الرافعة إذا رجت الأرض رجا وبست الجبال بسا فكانت هبا منبثا وكنتم أزواجا ثلاثة فأصحاب الميمنة ما أصحاب الميمنة وأصحاب المشأمة ما أصحاب المشأمة والسابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم ثلة من الأولين وقليل من الآخرين على سرور موضونة متكين عليها متقابلين يطوف عليهم ولدان مخلدون بأكواب وباريق وكأس من معين لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون وفاكهة مما يتخيرون ولحم طير مما يشتهون وحور عين كأمثال اللؤلؤ المكنون جزاء بما كانوا يعملون لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما وأصحاب اليمين ما أصحاب اليمين في سدر مخضود وطلح منضود وظل من دود وماء مسكوب وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطعة ولا ممنوعة وفرش مرفوعة إنا أنشأناهن إن شاء فجعلناهن أبكارا عربا ترابا لأصحاب اليمين ثلة من الأولين وثلة من الآخرين وأصحاب الشمال ما أصحاب الشمال في سموم وحميم وظل يحموم لا بارد ولا كريم 
إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك مترفين وكانوا يصرون على الحنث العظيم وكانوا يقولون أئذا متنا وكنا ترابا أئذا متنا وكنا ترابا وإذا منا إنا لمبعوثون أو آباؤنا الأولون قل لنا الأولين والآخرين لمجموعون إلى ميقات يوم معلوم ثم إنكم أيها الضالون المكذبون لآكلون من شجر من زقوم فمالئون منها البطون فشاربون عليه من الحميم فشاربون شرب الهيم هذا نظلهم يوم الدين نحن خلقناكم فلولا تصدقون أفرأيتم ما تمنون أأنتم تخلقونه أم نحن الخالقون نحن قدرنا بينكم الموتى وما نحن بمسبوقين على أن نبدل بدل أمثالكم وننشئكم فيما لا تعلمون <تصفيق> ولقد علمتم النشأة الأولى فلولا تذكرون أفرأيتم ما تهرثون أأنتم تزرعونه أم نهن الزارعون لو نشاء لجعلناه طعما فظلتم تفكهون إنا لمغرمون بل نحن محرومون أفرأيتم الماء الذي تشربون أأنتم أنزلتموه من المزن أم نهن المنزلون لو نشاء جعلناه جاجا فلولا تشكرون أفرأيتم النار التي تورون أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نهن المنشئون نحن جعلناها تذكرة ومتعا للمقوين فصبح باسم ربك العظيم <تصفيق> فلا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وإنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم إنه لقرآن كريم في كتاب مكنون لا يمسه إلا المطهرون تنزيل من رب العالمين أفبهذا الحديث أنتم مدهنون وتجعلون رزقكم أنكم تكذبون فلولا إذا بلوت الحلقوم وأنتم حينئذ تنظرون ونحن أقرب إليه من 
منكم ولكن لا تبصرون فلولا إن كنتم غير مدينين ترجعونها إن كنتم صادقين فأما إن كان من المقربين فروه وريحان وجنة نعيم وأما إن كان من أصحاب اليمين فسلام لك من أصحاب اليمين وأما إن كان من المكذبين من الضالين فنزل من حميم وتصلية جحيم إن هذا لهو حق اليقين فصبح باسم ربك العظيم <تصفيق> Sadaq Allah Aladhi. I uh, recited this surah because of the hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that the one who recites this surah in the night before going to bed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will protect him from poverty. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for that for ourselves <coughs> and for our families and all the Muslims inshaAllah. Today the uh, session inshallah is on the question of risk and uh, I have uh, titled it, I have said ordained or obtained because uh, this is the uh, this is the constant dilemma and uh, people always try to uh, they get confused whether risk is something which is uh, ordained is it written or is it something which is obtained that means I will get as much as I work for if I work hard I get more money if I work less hard I get less or what is it and inshallah today and tomorrow and depending on how we go maybe also next week we will complete this session and we will look at all the different questions with regard to risk uh, along with the Dalail from the Quran and the Sunnah uh, in this context. This is a very very important question because this question is probably the uh, single biggest source of confusion and also it is the single biggest reason why uh, if Allah does not protect us then we uh, take off at least on the road uh, to towards the hellfire because it's only for the issue of risk that people indulge in haram major major reason why people indulge in haram is for the sake of risk and they will say well you know if I if unless I take an interest based loan how can I, how can I run my business and un unless I do this or that which is not, which is prohibited uh, how can I survive and what will happen to me and my family and so on and so on and all sorts of confusion because of risk the other thing is also risk is the uh, single biggest source of stress and uh, personal uh, worry and anxiety with regard to people. What will happen to me? What will happen to my family? Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and when we say what will happen, may Allah forgive us. Uh, none of us is asking this question with regard to the Akhirah. Uh, really speaking seriously, we should be asking this question and saying what will happen to me? Meaning what will happen to me on the Day of Judgment? What will happen to me when I die? What state will I die in? Will I die in a state of Islam or will I die in a state out outside of Islam? Islam, may Allah protect us. When we say what will happen to my family after me, what is the question? What really is the question we should be asking? We should be asking the question that the Ambiya asked. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this question. Where Dawud alayhi salam called his, called his, uh, uh, his, his children and uh, they asked this question. The Ambiya asked this question to their children and they said, what will you do after me? What were they, what were they talking about? Were they saying, what will you do to my business after me? What was the business of the Ambiya? The business of the Ambiya was, was the Dawah of Islam, was Dawah of Deen. When they said, what will you do? And they said, we will follow the Rabb of, you follow your Rabb and the Rabb of your fathers, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say that what will happen to me, uh, this thing has changed. Look at, uh, 
Okay. So if you say what will happen to me uh, and what will happen to my family, then we must be really, the real question to ask is what will happen to me and my family with regard to my akhirah and with, the, with regard to the day of judgment. But subhanAllah, may Allah protect us and when we ask this question, we are really talking about this dunya. What will happen to me and my family after I am dead? Will they stop? Will they, what will happen to them? And this is the source of a great deal of anxiety and also the reason why we fall into wrong. We go, we do wrong things, uh, we pursue wrong kinds of businesses, uh, we do wrong sorts of wrong, uh, we take wrong decisions uh, with regard to our family, our friends uh, and so on and so forth and that is the reason why it's very important for us to be clear in our minds about the reality of this whole business of risk and inshallah that is what we will uh, attempt to do in these sessions uh, today, tomorrow and perhaps next week. Now what is risk? Uh, this is a very important thing to understand. Sometimes people feel that risk is money, risk is job. Uh, risk is an all-encompassing word that takes into account everything that we need in order to exist in this world. So risk is money, risk is food, risk is time, knowledge, health, energy, beauty, strength, spouses, children, movable, immovable, property, power, influence, authority, every kind of resource that we can imagine in order to survive and in order to develop and in order to live in the world. So all of that is risk. So risk is not only, risk is time, risk is free time. Uh, so risk is not only money, risk, risk is all of these things and that's why it's very important for us to uh, keep that in mind when we are talking about risk, we are not just talking about money. Now, risk is one of the five questions that will be asked on the day of judgment and we know this hadith and I have mentioned this hadith to you when we were doing the series on uh, death and hereafter on the day of judgment where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the hadith is reported in Tirmidhi he said the son of Adam Alaihi Wasallam will not pass away from Allah meaning he will not be able to move from the Maidan of Al Hashar until he is asked about five things until he answers five questions one, how did he live his life? What did he do with the time that was allotted to him? Two, in that time, how did he utilize his youth? How did he utilize his, his strength and his power as a youth? Three, with what means did he earn his wealth? Where did he get his money from? Number four, how did he spend this wealth? Where did, where did he earn it from? And where did he where and how did he spend it? And the last one is what did he do with his knowledge? Now if we look at these five questions, subhanAllah, we can see that all five of them have to do with only one thing and that is risk. All of this is risk. Your time is risk. Your youth and your health and your energy and your power and so on and so forth is risk. Wealth is risk. So where did you earn it from and where did you spend it is a question about risk. Knowledge is risk. And therefore we are talking about how did, what did you do with the knowledge, whatever knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. What did you do with the knowledge? Did you practice this knowledge? Did you use this knowledge in beneficial ways? Or did you, uh, did you not, not teach this knowledge or did you use the knowledge in harmful ways? All of these questions have to do with risk. And therefore it is very uh, important for us to understand how important this whole question of risk is all the five questions with regard to the day of judgment have to do only with one thing and that is risk and that's why it's very important for us to keep that in mind now there are six uh, important matters and in this series of lectures between today tomorrow and perhaps next week we will do with uh, we'll deal with all of these six so this is just a list of what these six are number one um, that all risk is preordained in terms of its quantity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken its responsibility himself. So this is one of the questions that we will look at and we will see the dalail, how is this, is this correct, how is it correct, what is the proof of this. Number two, that we have a choice only in terms of sources which we choose to obtain it from and where we choose to spend it. And so therefore that is the second question and we look at the Dalail for that. Number three, that shaitan will try to frighten us with poverty while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts us with his power and that shaitan has no power over the believer and seeks, uh, the believer who seeks protection from Allah. 
Number four, that sustenance, which is risk, both in its plenty as well as in its shortage are tests. Poverty is a test and wealth is also a test. Number five, what should you do? What action should you take in case of difficulties with respect to risk? If you are having any problem with respect to risk, then what should you do? Inshallah, we we'll look at that. And number six, the reason why we still need to work and do the best we can while we live in the world. Because if one question obviously is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the responsibility of risk on himself, then why should I work? And we'll see why we should work or whether we should not work. We'll let's see what comes out of that and we'll see inshallah the proofs of that. So the first one, um, the quantity of risk is preordained and Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has taken that responsibility on himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to begin with this beautiful ayat of, uh, of Surah Al Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the many uh, ayat of uh, what I call the self introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has introduced Himself, uh, who He is, what He is, what is His power. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qulillahumma malikal mulk, tu'til mulka man tasha'u wa tanzi'ul mil mulka min man tasha'u wa tu'izzu man tasha'u wa tu'zillu man tasha'u biyadika al khayr innaka ala kulli shayin qadir تولج الليل في النهار وتولج النهار في الليل وتخرج الحي من الميت وتخرج الميت من الحي وترزق من تشاء بغير حساب الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد he said, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, whenever the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, it is his right and it is our duty that we send salat and salam on him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim wa inna ka amidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim wa inna ka amidun majid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Imran says, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Allah, possessor of the kingdom, you you give Malik al Mulk. He is the Malik. He is the Malik. He is the He is the Malik. He is the Malik. He is the owner. He is the king. And he is the real king. Ta'ala Allahu al Maliku al Haqqu la ilaha illa huwa Rabbu al Arsh al Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Who is Allah? Ta'ala Allahu al Maliku al Mulk. He is the Ta'ala Allahu al Maliku al Mulk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is glorified and he is the Rabbul Arsh al Kareem. He is the Rabb of the Arsh. You give the kingdom to whom you will. Tutil mulka man tasha wa tanziul mulka mim man tasha. And you take the kingdom from whomever you will. Now see this thing we, we look at. Today we are literally looking at a time. We are living at a time when kingdoms are being dispersed. Huh? We call it Arab Spring and we call it this and we call it that and we see these are kingdoms are being dispersed. Kingdoms are being given and they are being taken away. So well, this is the beauty of somebody as Muslims if we read the Quran and if we understand the Quran and we live with the realization of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we see with the eyes of knowledge and we see with the eyes of Ibrat. You don't see the world like anybody else. You see the world with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore you say when things are happening you don't say this happened, that happened, what will happen political unstability blah 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 you say no 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 this is total mulka man tasha wa tanzil mulka mim man tasha you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has ordained that we live in a time when we can actually see this happening how many people have seen this happening how many generations passed away when there was nothing happening things were going on 200 years of, of British uh, rule there was no disbursement of kingdoms. There was one thing happened. So two generations, three generations, four generations, they just passed. And they never saw these, these, this, what this ayat is talking about. They never saw it with themselves, by themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is kept us in a, in, a, in a time when we are actually seeing this happening. Tutil mulka man tasha wa tanzil mulka min man tasha. Kingdoms are being given. Kingdoms are being taken away. Hey? 
And think also that no none of those whose kingdoms were taken away and given to others, none of them expected that kingdom to go. Did Husni Mubarak expect his kingdom to go? Did Tamimi expect his kingdom to go? Did Gaddafi expect his kingdom to go? Nobody, nobody, nobody. So what is the lesson for us? We also seem to live in a state where we expect that nothing will happen to us. That what Allah has given me is mine forever and ever. You must think that if Egypt was not Husni Mubarak's forever and ever, then even whatever I have in my life is not mine forever and ever. It is with me and it will remain with me. How long? Only as long as the real owner wants to keep it with me. This life is an amana. It's not ours to do with as we please. This life is an amana. It has been given in amana to us. Whether it is small, whether it is large, whether it is one house, one family, whether it is a whole community, whether it's a whole country, whether it's the whole world, it is an amana. The ownership has not been transferred. Ownership has not been transferred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give us a signed registration deed to say now this belongs to you. You are now the rabb of this. No. Rabbul Alameen. Who is Rabbul Alameen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to whom he wills and he takes it away from whom he wills. There are some of us who have lived long enough to actually see the Soviet Union at the peak of its power and who still continue to live and we live today when we see, we actually saw when Gorbachev came and Soviet Union actually breaking up into pieces. Yes? Do you recall the, the days of Soviet Union's power? What was Soviet Union at that time? And we, we have lived long enough to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the Soviet Union breaking up into pieces. Did we ever think, eh? did we ever think that Russia would break up, that the Soviet Union would break up? This is the reality. Nothing new happens in the world. We were talking about in the morning we walk, uh, in, in our, during our walk. Sayyid and I were saying, you know, nothing new. The same things happen. Human beings don't seem to learn. The same things happen over and over and over and over and over. No one expects zawal to come in his life. No one expects decline to come in his affairs. Even though, even though he or she sees zawal and sees decline coming in the lives of everyone before them. We have seen our fathers and our grandfathers in the peak of their strength. And then we saw them, we buried them because they died. What happened to their strength? So why do we imagine that our strength will last forever? It will not. It will not last forever. Our strength will also go. And those of us like me who have lived long enough, you are seeing the signs of that happening. You are seeing the signs of it happening. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It's nothing to regret. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes from, in, from one side and gives to another side. So today if you cannot jump down from a 12 foot balcony and live to tell the tale, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the wisdom to know that there is a stairway somewhere. You don't need to jump. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah, there, is, <laughs> there, are, there are ways, <laughs> benefits to things. So when we read the Quran, when we understand the Quran, Think about it. Look around ourselves and increase our iman. So he says, O oh Allah, possessor of the kingdom, the real owner of the kingdom, you give the kingdom to whom you will and you take the kingdom away from whom you will and you give honor and do with honor whom you will and you humiliate whom you will. SubhanAllah, how many examples of this? How many examples of this? Ibrat, Ibrat, Ibrat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Husni Mubarak, seeing the picture of Husni Mubarak, literally in a cage. Remember the picture which came? SubhanAllah, can you imagine that? Absolute ruler of Egypt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to take away the kingdom and put you in a cage to humiliate you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the humiliation, humiliation of Bill Clinton. 
while he was still in the White House. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the humiliation of George Bush while he was still in the White House. Huh? Subhanallah. Ajeeb, the shan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give izzah and he can give zillat as he wishes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's very important for us to understand the the the, the uh, pictures of prestige and power and honor and glory and the pictures of humiliation that we associate in our minds these are not indicators of either jo izzat ke ashkal hai jo shaklein izzat ki hai aur jo shaklein zillat ki hai ye shaklein hai izzat aur zillat is shakal mein nahi hai for us for example the the picture or the shakal or the the uh, framework of zillat of humiliation and degradation is a prison but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept his nabi yusuf alayhi salam in the prison and he glorified him in the prison and he gave him nubuwwat in the prison and he took him out of this prison even before that what can be more humiliating and powerless than being thrown into a well as a little child? Total helplessness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed that the shakal, the framework, the picture of helplessness is not helplessness. The picture of humiliation is not humiliation. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the picture of power and glory and majesty of the world of Ramesses the fourth, the Pharaoh of, of uh, Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humiliated him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us so many other signs of the Pharaohs, the Firaons of later ages. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us what happened with them. تعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيديك الخير and in your hand there is good verily you are able to do all things إنك على كل شيء قدير again issue of translations the power of إنك على كل شيء قدير even a shadow of that is not present in the translation of saying you are able to do all things إنك على Anta, you, Allah, over, kulli shayin qadir. You are over and everything is in your power and you are qadir. And you can do whatever you like to it. Where is the power of this in the translation? SubhanAllah, may Allah give us the tawfiq and the ability to understand Arabic and to really... Uh, Get the they get get the sweetness of the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wo maza nahi aata no tarjuma bhi aap urdu bolo kahi any language the issue is the arabic is the arabic is the language of the quran. Inna ka ala kulli shay'in qadir. You read that with the understanding of that and Allah your heart will become free from every fear and every anxiety. Completely. إِنَّكَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <coughs> You make the night enter into the day, and you make the day enter into the night. And you bring the living out of the dead, and you bring the dead out of the living. تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ And you give risk to whoever you want without accounting. This refers to getting the risk in terms of quantity without accounting بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ And inshallah it also refers to, be, to not being questioned about that risk on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put us among those who will not be questioned about anything on the day of judgment among those people who Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there will be 70,000 of the Rizwan Ajib, the, the ahadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba Rizwanullahi Alaihi Majmain 
This beautiful hadith which we have heard so many times where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day announced and he said that there will be 70,000 of my people, of my ummah who will be entered into Jannah without hisab. And one of the Sahaba stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that I am one of them. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, you are one of them. Eh? People took advantage. They took advantage of the position. Another person stood up. Ya Rasulullah, make the dua for me also. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, as sabiqun, as sabiqun, the one who asked before has gone before. Ajeeva. <laughs> then they asked him. They asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, who will these people be? Who will be questioned, uh, who will, will not be questioned, and who will enter the Jannah hisab, without Hisab? He said, they will be Al Mutawakkilun. They will be the people who will make tawakkul on Allah. They will rely only on Allah. And he said, they will be the people who will not use Taweez, who will not use any amulets and any Taweezat and all of these things, specifically Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, they will be people who will not use these things. Eh? Who will make tawakkul on Allah. Tawakkalna ala Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the mutawakkilun. We ask Allah. This deen is simple. This deen is, is beautiful. This deen is simple. Don't complicate it for yourself unnecessarily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Udu'uni astajib lakum. Ask me, I will give you. So ask Allah, take it. Why do you need anything else? For what? The people who have made these things into a source of income for themselves, they are the ones who sell all these tawis and this and that and they will say, there is this jinn on you. Well, maybe he knows because he must be his relative who is on you. <laughs> La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Eh? This bad luck is happening to you. So we'll come to you and we take away your bad luck. And of course, you know, after that I will not ask you for any money. No, no, no money and all that. But then if you insist on giving me something, well, I can't help it. You know, he insisted. Inna lillahi wa inna rajul. Shame, shame, shame. You make this deen into, a so, uh, in, into, a, into something which is for sale. No. This deen is not for sale. Let us be very, very clear in our minds. Ask Allah and Allah will give. <coughs> now think about this ayah. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about giving kingdoms and taking away kingdoms and the day and the night and death and life? And in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya Rzukhuma Ya Shabi Why? Because feeding us is peanuts. What is feeding us? Eh? Feeding us peanuts. <laughs> Feeding us is peanuts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his power and mentioned his khudrat before he talked about feeding us so that we understand that this is the Rabb. Subhanallah, I mean, why do we need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reassure us? But we are, we are humans, we are weak. So we need the reassurance, alhamdulillah. But think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, you know what? I am the one who does this. I can take away a kingdom and I can give away a kingdom. And what are you, man? You're worried? Why are you worried? Why are you worried? I can take away a whole kingdom and I can give away a whole kingdom. I can take up something which is dead and bring it back to life. And I can take something which is at the peak of its strength and I can finish it. So why are you worried? For what are you worried? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us his power and is showing us his glory and he's reminding us that for us to feed us is something which is not just, if, if I say it is not difficult for him, it is like, it's too much of a statement. I mean, you know, not difficult. I mean, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not even a consideration. Not even a consideration. That's why, you know, I like wildlife and I like to go to Africa again and again and again and take photographs of all these wildlife, of the animals. And I like to read about them. An African elephant on, the, on an average eats about seven to eight hundred kilograms of green stuff per day. Almost three, three quarters of a ton of green stuff per day. 
and I, I, I've never found a thin elephant. <laughs> elephant on a diet, huh? <laughs> Elephants look good only when they're fat. I mean, they're so <laughs> and that's only one. That's only one. A blue whale eats the equivalent of four African elephants a day in terms of food. And that it eats in the form of microscopic stuff, krill. So imagine the number of krill. Supposing you were born a krill, you wouldn't live very long if there are blue whales around, yeah? But krill live five years, can you imagine that? The lifespan of a, of a uh, Antarctic krill is five years, something which is one gram in weight. As long as, it's, as long as it keeps clear of blue whales, it lasts five years. That's a long life, five years to live in the open ocean. Who's sustaining it? It is if you go, you literally, I mean, subhanAllah, you, I, sometimes I feel you must, you must run around the streets dancing. And people say, why is this man dancing with a tower on his head? It's because of Allah. Because of Allah. Because of Allah, because it's just thought about Allah. This is Allah. And that's why I say we don't worship rocks and and and, and stones and idea and ideas and ideas and body parts of imaginary creatures. Huh? <laughs> we worship Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is real and who created everything that we know and everything we don't know. I was watching a, a video of, uh, of the Hubble telescope and they pointed the Hubble telescope at what they called nothing and left it on for 21 days. And you must see that video and I can't even describe to you what, what that is. And that is one small piece of the observable universe that we know. In that one film, they have literally filmed billions, not millions, billions of galaxies. And which is a galaxy? Our whole Milky Way is a galaxy, is one galaxy in which solar systems like ours there are uncounted numbers and such galaxies they have, they have filled billions in that one shot so who are we and where are we and that's why I say rejoice that we are people about whom the creator of all of this cares enough to send his Nabi and cares enough to send his Kalam and cares enough to allow us to worship him and to allow us to take his name and to allow us to recite his Kalam just the thought alone just the thought alone sometimes people ask you say, why did why does Allah care about the human beings and my answer is I have no idea why he cares about them but I am very glad he does thank Allah thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's getting time for Salat al-Maghrib so we'll take a break and inshallah we'll come back after Maghrib wa sallallahu ala nabil kareem wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin